All right, got a crafting video again. This time I'm gonna be covering the essentially min-maxed endgame gear that I've been working on and I'm still working on for a very highly invested Reap character, Reap Inquisitor specifically. I am playing in SSF, so all of this stuff is technically SSF doable, but I have also played a lot. Um, and a lot of the gear is going to be focusing specifically on very high levels of investment. But it should prove pretty interesting and probably helpful even if you're not going for exactly this type of gear. Some of the methods in general are pretty useful. With which I'm going to start by uh, going over some recombinator stuff. Because there's a particular recombinator method that I've used for... Uh, at least half of the items here in some part or another and that is using recombinators to get either three ideal prefixes or three ideal suffixes on an item so you can see in the case of uh, this wand right here i was using recombinators for prefixes and i was able to get plus one all spells plus one physical spells and a really high spell damage roll or on my gloves, I have tier 1 spell suppression, even though this is a pure armor base. Tier 1 life regeneration rate, and a temple cold resist mod, which also gives some damage against chilled enemies. And so, these are not particularly easy things to hit, but they're also not that hard. And uh, the method's the same, basically, regardless of what mods you're doing, there's just... You have to kind of decide which mods fill which role in the crafting. And it basically goes this way. You take the three mods that you've decided you want. And I've got as an example over here some rings. Which uh, one has flat lightning. One has flat cold. One has flat fire. And I've got a backup of each. But the starting point is basically to get the mods you want and potentially the bases you want with the mod isolated as either the only prefix or the only suffix. So in the case of these rings, since these mods that I'm trying to put together are all prefixes, I don't want any other prefixes if possible. Although now I've just realized that this one actually has a life prefix, so... That's not going to be ideal. Hopefully I won't need it, but I don't need it to show it. Point being, if uh, you have only the one prefix you're trying to combine, then your odds are as high as they can be. And aside from that, you're going to bench craft. You can see on all of these, I've bench crafted flat energy shield. So the first step would be... determining which mod is the easiest mod to get of the three. For this example, it doesn't really matter. I'll just say it's the flat cold damage is the easiest to get. You're going to want to use that one more times since it's the easiest to get. And your goal is to basically get a ring with your common mod and one of the rare mods and no other prefixes, and then a different ring, again with the same common mod, and then the other rare mod, and with no other prefixes. And once you get those, those are what you combine together to try to hit your triple prefix item. And that, where you have both of the two modded items, the success rate on the recombinators is about one in three. So it's actually not that hard of odds to hit your either triple perfect prefixes or triple perfect suffixes once you get the uh, part way through items. So in this case, I'm going to throw some together. We'll see what happens. I'm going to take this ring, which has flat cold, this ring, which has flat lightning. And you can see when I mouse over them here, they have no other prefixes other than the bench craft. On this first step, you always want to do it this way, where it's the two isolated mods and then a matching bench craft 
and this should give you, I believe it's a 45% chance of success to end up with both of those uh, prefix mods together on the resulting ring. We'll see what happens here. Unfortunately, we did lose one of the mods. We lost the uh, flat lightning, but it kept the cold so it doesn't completely get thrown away. I can use the same one again. And if I wanted to just try it again, but maybe with this fire damage one. Well, first I would need to uh, bring this back to the bench because it did lose the bench crafted mod. So I'd put that back on. Recombinate again. Now you can see again, the only prefixes are the ones I want to combine and the benchcraft. Hit the recombine. And it looks like, unfortunately, again, lost one of the mods. This time it lost the cold damage, but it kept the benchcraft and it didn't add any other prefixes. So again, this one can be reused. So if I just grab another cold ring, hopefully we can uh, get it on a third try. Same deal. No other prefixes, just the benchcraft. It looks like, unfortunately, I lost a mod again. That'll happen. Again, I think the odds on that initial craft of getting both of them together is about 45%. And then once you get the rings that have two mods and you try to combine those, the one thing I wanted to show that I can't because I didn't get one there is um, I can try with this, even though this one has an extra life roll, which messes things up. See if I can just get a two mod ring which i can't the one thing to note is you want bench crafts when you're doing those initial combines but once you have items that have two desired mods on them you do not want bench crafts when you're recombining the two mod items it's only the single mod items when you're combining those together that you want to have bench crafts And so overall, if you take the chances of success at the first step and the chances of success at the second step, you really only end up needing your more rare mods. You only end up needing them uh, five to ten times max, unless you get really unlucky. And it's probably even less than that because when you fail your recombines a good chunk of the time you're keeping at least one of those mods so like in the case of this wand um to get these these prefixes seem really really good and they are really good but the plus one all spells is really the only hard part to get essences can get you the spell damage and you can do a vendor recipe for the plus physical and so realistically kind of worst case scenario you should only have to expect to need to maybe get plus one all spells like five times on isolated profane wands in order to end up with something like this. And it might be even less because you will uh, keep the mod a bunch when you fail. But that general strategy there is uh, how... Most of the triple prefixes or triple suffixes on these items were acquired. And whenever I reference the uh, recombinator for either prefixes or suffixes, that's kind of what I'm talking about. So, with that in mind, let's jump into the items. Let's we'll start at this wand, which I just mentioned. I did the prefixes first with recombinators. My method was using the vendor recipe, which is if you take a unrolled white wand and 40 quality worth of physical tagged gems, which you can see at the top of the gem description, it has all the tags, spell, AOE, duration, fire, physical, guard. I can show you one here. If I was to take two of these, which is 40 qualities worth, Take this wand, I need to scour it to a white wand. And you vendor it. You will get a... Oh, this one actually, that's interesting. It prioritizes to plus one fire, I guess, because Molten Shell has a fire tag. Either way, you can see the recipe. It works with all the different types, so... I learned something new. 
If it has multiple tags, I guess whichever one shows up first takes priority, so you cannot use Molten Shell to get physical gem rolls. But you get the idea. And then it's just a matter of regaling. One thing you can do when you regal that after it's you've got the plus one, you can actually bench craft cannot roll caster mods. And then regal. And then you will never regal a caster mod. What you really don't want to regal is a prefix. But if you did regal a prefix, if you had this cannot roll caster mods on when you regaled, it won't be a caster prefix. And this actually works with annulment orbs as well. So what you could then do is just use an annulment orb. And the annulment orb will not be able to get rid of your plus one roll because it's a caster mod. And so the annulment orb also cannot roll for the caster mod. You can just get it isolated. And then for the other part of the weapon, the spell damage, it's just spamming essences of woe until you get no other prefixes. Or if you do get other prefixes, you can do that same cannot roll caster annulment strategy if you have a lot of extra annulment orbs and the other prefixes aren't caster mods. And you would just recombine those to get spell damage plus plus one physical wand, which I think I have a couple of. Yeah, you can see right here. And you can see my bench craft left over from when I was recombining. So this has essence, spell damage, and plus one fizz. And then for the plus one all spells, you go to fossils. And four socket resonators work best, but they're kind of hard to come by, especially if you're an SSF. Um, you can pretty reliably get plus one all spells with resonators. If you have a four socket resonator, what you want to use is corroded fossil, shuddering fossil, metallic fossil, jagged fossil. And it's about a one in four chance when you use that combination to get plus one all spells. When you get it, it will almost always also have a spell damage roll, just percent spell damage, which actually kind of works in our favor. Because even though it won't be a high tier of spell damage, it is the same mod that matches the other wand you've made. And so you now have both of your two mod wands where one has plus one fizz and spell damage. The other one has plus one all spells and spell damage. And you can just recombine those. And again, it's about a one in three chance to succeed there to get all three mods. However, you have another kind of coin flip 50 50 of hoping it picks your higher spell damage roll. Which, if it doesn't, you could actually just, like, let's say you got this wand, but it had 30 spell damage instead of 94 spell damage. You could actually take this with these prefixes and just take another one of these wands that has the good spell damage and recombine again. And your chances of keeping all, all the mods is even higher now because you're sharing even more. But, or you could just settle for the lower spell damage depending on what it is. But if you want to brute force to the high one, you would just keep recombining until you hit it all. And then once you get the prefixes done, uh, for me, for the suffixes, it was pretty straightforward. I just went for unveiled cast speed, which if I pull this up, you can see I have a uh, example wand right here. You would get the prefixes and you would lock the prefixes with prefix can't be changed. And then... You could use a Veiled Chaos Orb, or you can use Ashling Rank 4, specifically, specifically if there's no other suffixes, which is what I went for. And you're going to want to hit it with the Ashling thing, you'll get a Veiled suffix. Before you unveil though, when it comes to Veiled mods, um, I like to use PUEDB to check this. You can increase the odds of unveiling what you want by essentially blocking something else. So if you go to the mods to the item type, you scroll down a bunch, you'll get to the veiled mods. So veiled suffixes here. What I'm looking for is the biggest mod group by weight. Which in this case is right here. It's this damage over time group. It's 4000 mod weight. So I'm going to block this before I unveil because if I put one of these mods on with the bench which is how I block it I just bench craft any one of these that means none of these can be in the unveil list anymore 
So instead of a total weight of 18,500, it would be 14,500, which pretty heavily increases the odds of hitting the one we want. Which here would be this uh, cast speed roll, which has a weight of 1,000. One thing to note on this is uh, you can get fooled sometimes, and you can see it on the prefixes on the wand. When it comes to Ashling unveils and Veiled Chaos, it's only generic unveils that can show up. You can't get ones from specific members. So if you went to block the prefix, a prefix craft here, which isn't for this build, just in general, um, you would actually see the highest group by weight is this bottom one with 8,000. But this isn't a generic, just any syndicate member unveil. This is only from it that fled. And you can tell because the prefix name listed here is it's instead of chosen, which all these other ones you'll see are going to say chosen. It has to be chosen prefix mods to be blockable. So you would actually end up wanting to block one of these. So moving on, we have our veiled suffix. We're going to go to our crafting bench. We are going to bench craft a damage over time multiplier, which the first one I found is chaos. So I'll just do that. Doesn't matter what tier. And then we are going to hit our unveil and we would hope for Caspi, which I actually got on the first try here, which is pretty lucky. But if you don't get it on the first try, um, all you would have to do is Prefix can't be changed again, and either Annul to get rid of the mod that's there now, or Scour to get rid of it with the Prefix can be changed, or again, you can you can try just using Veiled Chaos. The thing with Veiled Chaos is, uh, we go back a few steps, there's a chance that it'll add more suffixes. Most of the time you'll only get the Veiled suffix, but it might add some extra stuff which you wouldn't want. Like that, that becomes a problem. Although in this case, not so much. Well, this one is a problem because it's six mods. If it hits six mods, it's a problem. If it hits five mods, as long as the fifth mod isn't a caster mod, you might be able to cannot roll caster and all. Which is actually a way you could salvage the item on a bad unveil as well. And, uh... Is cheaper. So let's say the veiled suffix misses. You don't get the cast speed you're looking for, so pretend that's not there. If you intentionally pick one that's not a caster mod, so like damage per frenzy charge, what you could actually do is you could benchcraft cannot roll caster instead of the thing you were blocking, and you could do this annul to get rid of that mod to get it back down to a no wasted suffixes. So let's go back. We do the Ashling. I'm just going to brute force this to get the mod back on. So we can go to the next step. You can see without blocking, there's a dot damage over time multiplier mod almost every single time. This is why blocking is really powerful. I would like a cast speed modifier there it is at this point um what i was doing my final mod that i wanted on the wand is you can see up here ideally is hatred aura effect it's the best mod for us it's a redeemer suffix so we're going to use a redeemer exalt over to specifically increase the chance of this mod our best way to go about this is actually to use cannot roll caster mods again. So I would go back to the crafting bench and I would actually put cannot roll caster mods on the wand before using the redeemer exalt. This does get rid of the chance of hitting spells have a chance to deal double damage, which is actually a pretty good mod. Frostbite on hit, which can be a decent mod and cast speed if you've killed recently, which can be a decent mod. You're actually killing the chance for a few decent mods and you're kind of increasing the chance for bad mods like Onslaught on Kill. But if you want to min-max the chance for your best mod, this is how you do it. Cannot roll caster. Hit it with this. I got this aura effect one, which 
isn't terrible, but it's not great. And the wand is very, very usable at this point. You would just craft crit multi and be done. But I would really want to go for the hatred effect, which should be about a one in four chance to hit here. But RNG is RNG sometimes. And that right there, that's like the basically perfect GG wand. You would just remove this bench craft and you would bench craft crit multi. And that's done. And that's the longest explanation you're going to get for a single item because the wand is a doozy. Going to the next one, um, the shield is a slot that has a few ways to go about it. I personally on SSF think the best way to do it is the recombinating strategy, specifically for the prefixes. So flat life, plus one physical, and a either spell damage or cold damage roll, which this shield doesn't have. I'm still working on that. I have this one over here, which actually has all three of those prefixes. But the way to finish the suffixes without spamming more recombinators and risking losing the prefixes requires a harvest augment craft, either fire, cold, or lightning, which I don't have. But you can see I recombinated my way to this with, uh, I was using the flat life as the common mod since I could just get it with essences. And then getting plus one fizz and either cold damage or spell damage through just like harvest reforges. This one I used a Hunter X salt to get a percent life roll since I was missing the damage roll and it was just a guaranteed way for some percent life. But the other way to get the prefixes done would be to alt spam for a really high spell damage roll or a really high cold damage roll. And then Regal and Isolate as the only prefix. Maybe you cannot roll cast or annulments. And once you get that done, you would then lock the prefixes and use Harvest Reforge Physical more likely. And what you're looking for is plus one physical to show up alongside your spell damage or cold damage roll. And once you have both of those mods on the prefix, you might have Thorns or something as a third prefix. You can again just cannot roll cast or annul. And you would end up with spell damage and plus one. And then you lock prefixes again and you reforge life on harvest fishing for a high life roll. Anytime you hit a bad life roll or some other prefix, cannot roll caster mods, annul. And just repeat, repeat, repeat. And that's a very deterministic way to get high life with high spell damage with plus one. But as you can imagine, you're locking prefixes like every step of the way. That's a lot of exalts. And at least in SSF, that's pretty tough to put up the exalts for unless you just have nothing else to use them on but you're not done there because once you get the prefixes done what you're going to do is lock the prefixes again and then reforge cold fire or lightning to either get a resist roll or ailment avoidance in this case i would go for an ailment avoidance roll since it's what you're going to keep anyway so you could assume that you could pretend that that's how this showed up is i locked prefixes and i reforged cold or fire and i got ailment avoidance once you get this, what you can do to force a max res roll is I could actually go bench craft fire res. And if I had a harvest augment fire modifier like this, but for fire instead of attack right now, the only fire modifier left on this item is plus max res because there's three fire tagged suffixes and I have the other two on the item right now which I can bring up, I believe here, yes. So you can see. However, again, this isn't fully guaranteed. You're guaranteed to hit max fire res. You are not necessarily guaranteed to hit plus three max fire res. But we can show it. Harvest crafting, augment. You have to make sure, obviously, that you match the augment with the flat res that you have on. Otherwise, you're uh, not guaranteeing anything. So we can do this. That one was a plus two. You might be able to settle with a plus two. But anytime you missed right here, you would essentially just lock 
the prefixes again and do the harvest reforge again and start the suffix process over. It's not particularly um, complicated on the suffixes. The problem is just you need harvest augments, which if you're in SSF are very, very rare and extremely hard to come by. But it can get you to here, which is basically perfect suffixes. And then for my character, I currently have spell suppression crafted, but I'm eventually going to switch that out for a double damage craft. And that's the shield that's done. Helmet. Um, my helmet's in a weird spot. I would have normally used the recombinator strategy to get spell suppression, chaos res, and life regenerate. Probably using chaos resist as the uh, more common mod for overlapping because of essences of envy being able to guarantee chaos res rolls, whereas the other ones you have to roll for manually. However, I had this helmet that already had a reap enchant, and I didn't want to lose the enchant recombinating, so what I did instead was I was using essences and harvest chaos reforges until I got the spell suppression alongside it. And then I actually had an open suffix, which I locked suffixes and did a reforge life more likely for, and was lucky enough to hit a life regenerate roll. It's not tier one. If I was doing the recombinator strategy, it would be a tier one life regen roll. But that got the suffixes done and then locking suffixes again and doing some more reforge life to get decent life prefixes finished to that one up pretty straightforward um the boots and the gloves are two of the just purely recombinator strategy items the boots i have spell suppression life regenerate and then ailment avoidance i used ailment avoidance as the more common modifier this comes from essences of loathing which I had a ton of. Anything that comes from Essences is pretty easy to use as the more common modifier for recombinating because Essences are just a lot more farmable than a lot of other things. Like rolling for spell suppression is not particularly easy, especially when you want spell suppression on an item with no other suffixes. Like alteration spamming is one of the better ways. And it's a lot easier to run out of alterations than it is to run out of Essences if you just spam farm for Essences, so... But in this case, you can see this has 30 ailment avoidance. So I was only actually using, um, I believe the shrieking tier. Yeah, shrieking tier of essence. I didn't need higher. Um, did the recombinators, got the suffixes done. And then for, this can apply to the helmet and the gloves as well as the boots. The prefixes, when you're fishing for the life rolls, there's a few ways to go about it. Um, you either can lock the suffixes and do reforge life, which will give you some sort of life roll, maybe a hybrid life roll. You can use harvest crafts like reforge keep suffixes, which can give you a chance. Or if you have extra Eldric currency, you can use things like Eldric Chaos, Eldric Annulments, Eldric Exalts. Eldric Chaos are pretty straightforward. You just use them with the influences set up to reroll prefixes. The Annuls and Exalts, what you can do is if you get the item with no prefixes at all you can just bench craft a prefix that you don't want to hit that has a really high chance of hitting so in the case of boots you could see on an armor based boots you can just bench craft like percent armor which is the highest mod weight besides life and if you bench craft that then you use an eldric exalt you now can't exalt it so it helps your chances a little bit and then if you hit something bad, you would just remove the benchcraft, use the Eldric Annul to get rid of the bad mod, and repeat. Um, both the Eldric Currency strategy and the Reforge Keep Suffixes strategies aren't particularly reliable, but you do just kind of find them occasionally, so if you have access, you may as well use them, because they don't have a ton of other uses. Whereas the locking suffixes and reforging life is a lot more deterministic, but again, it costs two exalts per try, so it's a lot more costly. Um, I was actually going to go for unveiled movement speed on this one, but I happened to just hit two really good prefixes with tier one life and tier one armor percent. Um, I might still try eventually, but I don't really want to lose either of those mods since they're both really good. I might just settle with keeping crafted movement speed. Since uh, if I was to lock suffixes and use Ashling to get an unveiled movement speed roll, there's a two out of three chance that I lose either the life or the armor. 
which I wouldn't want to do. And then the gloves, I showed them earlier. Um, spell suppression, a temple mod, and life regenerate. On this one, I used life regenerate as the more common mod. All three of the mods are kind of rare. The reason I was using the life regenerate as the more common mod for recombinating was because it rolls on armor gloves more naturally, which was the base I wanted to land on. So I was taking a pure evasion pair of gloves to roll for suppression because pure evasion has a higher chance of hitting suppression than like armor evasion. Um, I was using pure evasion for suppression and a pure armor for life regenerate and then recombinating them. And then so once I get the item with both of those, there's also like a 50% chance that it landed on the armor base, which is what I want. And then likewise, I was taking the temple mod, which just kind of comes on whatever you find with the temple mods, which it doesn't have to be the cold res temple mod. It can be any of them. I think I have some extra ones laying around. So like this fire as one would also work because you can actually use harvest resist swaps on these temple rolls and it'll change them to the other temple rolls. So you just need something. And then I was combining those with life regenerate again on pure armor. So once I got temple mod plus life regenerate, that again had a 50-50 chance of landing on the pure armor base. So then when I was doing the final recombine to go for all three suffixes, I was much more likely to have pure armor Titan gauntlet bases in the mix to land me on the base that I was shooting for. And once I got the suffixes, uh, the prefixes on this one are actually kind of tough because it needs a bench craft of either physical converted to cold or of plus one socketed AOE, which are two of the unveil mods. You need to craft one of them for this character for the min-maxing purposes at least. You actually have to get a life roll of some sort before then locking suffixes and using Ashling. So every time you do that, if you have no other prefixes, you still have a 50-50 chance of losing your life roll and essentially bricking the item. Now, however, if that happens, let's say I had these gloves and I had, you know, 80 life and I had prefixes can't be changed. And then I use Ashling. And the Ashling gets rid of the 80 life. That means the item still has prefixes can't be changed. So if you do the unveil and nothing good shows up, you actually don't want to block. You want to just keep that pre or suffixes can't be changed. Rather, you want to just keep that suffixes can't be changed on the item because you can use it to at least try to get a life roll back again. You can just go reforge life and harvest and there's a chance you'll get your life roll back. But either way, um, eventually you'll have one with a life roll with the veiled mod. And again, you're gonna block before unveiling. So you would go here, you would check your mod weights on gloves, scroll down to veiled. And you can see, I believe the biggest weight is, um, technically it's these conversions, but they cost a divine orb, I think each to block, which is worth it. But alternatively, you can just block one of the other plus one crafts if you're short on divine orbs. So it'd either be a plus one that's not AOE or a conversion that's not cold conversion would be your block options. And you actually already have life blocked by having a life roll, which is helping you a little bit. But the prefixes are pretty tough. I would, ideally you want the conversion unveil. It's slightly better because it means you don't need the conversion implicit, but there's very minimal difference. You want cold conversion or plus two AOE unveil, which in my case, I got the plus two AOE. And then I benchcrafted the other one. And that just leaves us with the rings in the chest. The amulet is a leadership's price. It's a unique. My belt is a mage blood. It's a unique. Um, and I'm going to show the rings first. The rings were uh, both using Essence Crypt Multi. This one, this is on a fractured base. I kind of gambled it a bit. There's two ways to go about this ring. That's not the Redeemer ring. 
you can either do the recombinator strategy, which involves getting crit multi and cast speed and chaos res. The crit multi comes from essences, so you could kind of look at it as the common mod if you have a lot of essences. And just doing the recombinator to get all three. Or alternatively, what you can do is you can actually deterministically hit these with harvest if you just get a ring with crit multi by itself. The recombinator strategy takes longer to do and will burn through a lot more essences potentially and other rerolling to get the mods. But it's good for guaranteeing plus three. And it's actually what I did on this ring, which is uh, one that I'm still working on finishing for an upgrade which you can see has triple tier one suffixes, tier one cast speed, tier one chaos res with the essence. Whereas this one does not have tier one mods. The reason this one does not have tier one mods is because I was using a different strategy for it, which is just forcing the mods with harvest. Because on a ring that is uninfluenced, where the two mods we want are cast speed and chaos resist, there's only one chaos resist mod on rings that are uninfluenced and it's chaos resist so if you get the crit multi with no other suffixes and you craft suffixes can't be changed and then you harvest reforge chaos you will always get chaos res but there's a problem you can get a third suffix which you can see here and that screws the item up really badly and it's really annoying um there's one way to avoid that which is to multi-mod and then craft suffixes can't be changed and then that multi-mod won't go away and it blocks the suffix but it's an extra 2x I don't even know that it's necessarily worth it and this is kind of why I switched towards the recombinator strategy but we can do it a few times you'll see eventually we'll get chaos res by itself probably <laughs> On second thought, you know, let's go ahead and multi-mod it. If we do three plus three mods and then we do suffixes can't be changed, what you'll see now is we won't hit that problem because the three, this is a suffix and it can't be changed, right? So the only thing it adds is the chaos res and we can do this over and over and you can see it actually is fine now. The problem with the harvest strategy is we're not guaranteeing a high tier of chaos res. So you can see that one's a tier one, but that's tier three. And this is kind of how I ended up, but either way you end up at this point and then you would again, craft suffixes can't be changed or sorry. You have to remove this, uh, bench craft first. Now suffixes can't be changed and then switch to harvest reforge caster because cast speed, is the only caster mod on a ring. So that's guaranteed as well. But again, it's not guaranteed high tier. And you can see T3 Chaos, T3 Cast Speed. Looks familiar. That's exactly what I ended up with on my ring. It gets you the mods. It gets you them quickly. It's pretty good for a situation like this ring because I had fractured tier one life. So recombinating at some point along the way is going to risk losing that fractured life. So there are merits to doing it with that harvest way, but it can burn through a lot of exalts if you want to get high tier rolls. Whereas the recombinator strategy, I have not used a single exalt on this ring yet. Um, and then you just finish up the prefixes on this fractured one. It's kind of just done other than maybe fishing for a higher energy shield prefix on my new one that I'm working on. What I'm actually going to do, I think is crusader exalt this and then maybe lock suffixes and reforge caster for spell damage. And then I would try to get unveiled life on it after that, and then do a bench craft. Um, but still working on that, still working that out exactly. The other ring is basically the same idea as this first one, but instead of going for a chaos res as the third suffix it goes for frostbite on hit so it's a redeemer influence ring and being an influence ring unless you just have a ton of influence rings sitting around you kind of have to do that harvest strategy you can't just spam recombinators but if your ring is if we go back a handful of steps here 
and we were to just redeemer hit this one real quick so now it's a redeemer ring there are now two caster suffixes one of them is cast speed which we're going for and the other one is make room for that frostbite on hit so if we got to the same situation on a redeemer ring where it has crit multi and no other suffixes we bring our harvest craft back out we cast a reforge we probably want to cast her more likely even so maybe it'll save us uh an exalt again this still runs that risk of hitting a dead suffix like you can see right there so it might be a good idea to put multi-mod on first for the first reforge in which case the reforge more likely doesn't matter you just use regular reforge you're gonna either get cast speed or you're gonna get the curse on hit whichever one you don't get you're gonna suffix lock again do it again and now you have the three suffixes and then same thing you can either go for an unveiled life roll on your prefix or you can go for locking suffixes and like reforging life to go for a good life roll which is how you would go for full min maxing but you can see it's pretty hard to hit a really high life roll where the uh, unveil i believe goes up to 55 life guaranteed and this takes a lot of tries especially because you can also hit leech which gets in the way but if you really want to min max the full way this is how you would eventually go for it and eventually you get a high tier and those are the rings finally the last piece the body armor um there's a couple ways to go about this one the one i have i got a double fractured base you can see and then it's using faceted fossils to get plus one strength gems and if you want to figure out your best odds kind of of how to get plus one strength gems you can use craft of exile because faceted fossils are pretty rare so if we go here we go to our body armor base we're using a strength int base and we are using fossils we are at least using a faceted fossil and we want plus one strength gems now let's say max size resonator we'll say four we can hit this compute best up here and it'll find the best fossil combo to hit the mods we want you can see the faceted by itself was a one in four with four socket resonators we can get it down to one in three which doesn't really seem worth it we can probably do the same with a three socket resonator yeah you can see eroded plus shuddering or a whole bunch of these other options work pretty well. What I would recommend is any of the ones that use pristine fossils. If we do just faceted plus pristine, let's see what it changes our odds to. It becomes one in five, so it actually gets worse. So we need to put something else with it. Which I don't know if you can do on a three socket to lower your odds. It would maybe be something like a corroded might bring it back down to four. Dense shows that it brings it down to three, but that gets rid of your ability to hit life rolls. This is gonna depend on how many faceted fossils you have. The point the the reasoning for pristine fossil would be hit life regen. Hopefully. Or if you don't have a um fractured fizz reduction suffix jagged fossil could be pretty good and again if you combo with corroded it's probably going to go down you can play around a bit depends on what you're shooting for what you have in my case because i had a physical reduction fracture the combo i did end up using was the faceted fossil with a pristine fossil and a corroded fossil when I hit this and it came with the life regen roll thanks to the pristine fossil not a very good life regen roll mind you but still a very very strong body armor 
And with that, that means the suffixes were done. I had a life regen, I had my plus one, and I had my fractured suffix. And I could then freely lock the suffixes and either use Ashing or Veiled Chaos to get my unveiled life roll. And then my benchcraft. And that was the body armor. Pretty straightforward, you just need faceted fossils, they're rare. Um, for the fractured mods, I will really quickly show that. Um, how to kind of go about it. When you want to take a fractured mod that you have found, so let's say this 99 life roll, and you want to move it to a better base. What you're going to try to do is you want either no other... Since this one's a prefix, I want either no other prefix, or I want a prefix that I can benchcraft. So if I just keep spamming this until I get either a suffix regal or... There we go, a craftable prefix. So now what I would do, I'm going to take the prefixes. I'm going to craft just anything. Take the base type that I want to move it to, craft the same thing. So now across these two items, there's our fractured prefix and there's the matching craft and no other prefixes. This gives you a, I believe, 80% chance of keeping the fractured mod and then a 50% chance of landing on the base you want. So the chance of losing the fractured mod is actually quite low. So of course I lost it on the first try. But that's okay because I have a backup. It also landed on the wrong base. Which is not ideal for the purposes of showing how these work. This one actually hit a craftable prefix. Which normally the fact that it's not crafted would be a problem, but since we're dealing with a fractured mod, it doesn't matter that this one's not crafted, because as long as we land the fracture properly, we can just scour it. So again, same thing. Let's see. Okay, we kept our fractured mod, but we lost our base that we were trying to move to. In which case I could just grab another one let me find a a better looking base to throw in here a saintly chainmail is fine to do this again we're going to craft that matching evasion and we're going to recombine again and hopefully we we kept the fracture mod again you can tell right away with fracture mods cuz the item has the icons but i lost that base so I will grab another saintly chain mail and I will try again. And there we go. So now it's on the saintly chain mail and it has the fraction mod. Now normally these two items that I'm going to go with next would actually be on the same base because it's you're probably trying to move them both to the same thing. Uh, I didn't have extra dragon scales prepared for this video. But I now have um, a fractured prefix item and a fractured suffix item. So what we're doing here now is the same kind of deal. We do not want a flat life roll like that. That is very bad. We don't want to match our fractured mod in any way. Lightning res there is good. We basically need one item to have a craftable prefix and one item to have a craftable suffix. So now what I'm looking for to hit on this is a prefix mod that is craftable. So there's mana. And you're just going to match the other one. So my other item has craftable suffix of lightning res. So I put that here. This item has a craftable prefix of mana. Put it here. And so now I have my fractured mod prefix with double mana rolls. I have my fractured mod suffix of spell suppression with two lightning res rolls. And again, we're just going to recombine. Um, I don't remember the exact odds of success here. I think it's it's above 60%, I believe, to end up with both fractured mods on the same item. And again, in theory, these should have both been on the same base, so you wouldn't have to worry about the right base. But we'll see what happens. This is how you would go about trying to hit the mod. And we actually got it. So you can see now, 
double fracture, one prefix, one suffix. That was how I went for it on the body armor. And then whatever's left, you can just scour off. It's done. You don't care about it anymore. But that's how you would go for those. And then again, back to the fossils for everything else. And that's everything. Um, that probably dragged on a bit longer than I planned for it to. But I think that's about as in-depth as I can get for crafting for this league. This has been my most min-maxed kind of crafting character experiment yet. Possibly my last character of the league, I'm not sure yet. But definitely the one I'm investing the most into. So we've been using a lot of very high level strategies. Which I think most of them actually are pretty straightforward. It's just a matter of having the resources. But that being said, um, I do get asked about it a lot. So clearly a lot of people don't know about all of these different methods. And so now people will know, hopefully. I hope the video was helpful. Hope it didn't drag on too long. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.